G'day, I'm Paul, VK5 Papa Alpha Sierra, and I'm the coordinator in Australia for the Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program. I'd like to introduce you to a fantastic program called Fast Log Entry, abbreviated as FLE. It was created by a German amateur, Delta Fox 3 Charlie Bravo. Fast Log Entry, or FLE, is a text editor to enter QSO data as easy and as fast as possible without any redundancy. And the tool is very, very useful if you didn't take a logging computer out with you in the field for your park activation. FLE consists of two main panels, a text editor, which has a customizable context sensitive highlighting area and a QSO data grid. And I'll show you those very shortly. The grid shows the completed QSO records and they can be saved as an ADA file, an amateur data interchange format file. The very latest version of FLE is version 2.1 and that can be downloaded from the FLE website which is www.df3cb, that's Delta Foxtrot 3 Charlie Bravo.com forward slash FLE forward slash. In the WWFF program, activators provide their logs to the relevant national coordinator, who in turn uploads the activator logs to the WWFF log search system. At log search, all activators and hunters in the WWFF program can keep a track of their progress. And you can also apply on log search for all of your WWFF awards. It's imperative that activators do provide their log for upload. If your log isn't uploaded, not only do you rob yourself of the opportunity of applying for particular WWFF awards, but all of the hunters that worked you whilst you were activating the park will also not be able to lay a claim for that park. So it is very important that you provide your log for upload. But perhaps you don't have an electronic log at home and you can't create an ADA file. Well, there is another option. You can, of course, use the CSV file. There is a template, a CSV file, which can be downloaded from either Log Search itself or the WWFF Australia website or the WWFF Australia Yahoo group. However, if you do want to create an ADA file, then I highly recommend Fast Log Entry, FLE. It's free, it's easy and available there for you to download from the internet. And I'm sure you'll agree that after you've used it a few times, it's a very, very simple, easy and quick process to create an ADA file so that you can provide that to the National Coordinator of WWFF and perhaps later upload it to an electronic program you may have. So let's talk a little bit about fast log entry. I mentioned earlier that fast log entry consists of two main panels. You're looking at the main screen here of fast log entry and on the left you can see a text editor panel. It has a customizable context sensitive highlighting area and on the right you can see a separate panel. This is what they call the QSO data grid and the grid shows your completed QSO records and they can be saved as an ADIF file. ADIF stands for Amateur Data Interchange Format. So to commence entering your logs from the field, what we need to do is commence with the date of your very first QSO and we need to use the keyword of date. So if we go to the left hand panel where you see the number one, this is the text editor panel click in there and we need to enter the keyword of date in capital letters Delta Alpha Tango Echo press space and this is very important we now need to enter the date and it must be in the correct date format the date format is year month 
day. So in my case, 2015-09 for the month, September-19, 19th of September 2015. No other date formats are acceptable with the fast log entry program. And as long as the date entry is not completely entered or the date is not in a valid format, it will be highlighted with a yellow color. As you can see here, it's incomplete. I haven't placed in the 19 and you'll see that the date is highlighted in yellow. If I format it correctly, you'll see that the yellow highlighting is removed and the date will appear in blue. Now we need to enter the band and the mode of the very first QSO that you are entering. If we go to line two, press enter. It can be any band according to ADIF specifications. ADIF stands for Amateur Data Interchange Format. So for example, it can be 160 meters. It could be 80 meters or it could be 40 meters. In my case, it was 40 meters. We also need to place in the mode, for example, CW, SSB, RTTY. In my case, my contacts were on 40 meters SSB. No need to place USB or LSB for upper or lower sideband. SSB will suffice. Press enter and you'll go down to line three. Now we need to enter our QSOs in a new line with the time in UTC and the call sign. And it must be in sequence for your call signs. It's also important to highlight here that I receive some logs where people record their time in local time. This is pretty much useless because 11.30 a.m. in Victoria or 11.30 a.m. in South Australia is certainly not 11.30 a.m. in Paris or Berlin. All times must be in UTC, Universal Time Coordinated. So my very first QSO for this activation was at 0.450 UTC, and it was with Norm, VK5GI, who was portable in the Bullock Hill Conservation Park. So I've entered 0450 UTC, press space, VK5, GI, stroke portable. Now to enter my next QSO. It was at 0451 with Greg, VK5, GJ, who was also portable. There's no need to record the 0400 in the UTC time now. We've already recorded 0450 UTC here. All I need to do in line four is now record the minute of that QSO. So as I said, it was at 0451. I simply type in 51 VK5GJ stroke portable. If my QSO with Greg was at 0450 UTC, the same time as Norm, there would be no need for me to enter the time at all. I've already recorded 0450 UTC in the formatting. No need to type it again. Just simply type VK5 GJ portable. Enter down for your next QSO. But in my case, the time was a little bit different. It was 0451 UTC. So I just simply type in 51 down to the next line. If I formatted the times and the call signs correctly, you'll see that the time will appear in green and the call sign will appear in blue. This gives you an indication that you've entered the details correctly. My next QSO was 0453 with Mick, VK3 PMG, who was also portable. Remember, I only need to enter the change part of the time compared to the previous QSO. So it was still within 0400 UTC, but on this occasion, it was at 0453. I just simply need to type 53, press space, enter VK3, PMG, stroke portable. And then down to your next line, line six. My next QSO was with Tony, VK3, VTH, at 0456. Remember, 
no need to type 04. You only need to type in the change part of the time compared to the previous QSO. So 56 space VK3 VTH stroke portable. Enter down to line 7. I've now entered a new hour of UTC time. My next contact was with Rex, VK3 Oscar Fox at 0503. So I need to type in 0503 in full. 0503 space VK3 Oscar Fox. My next QSO was with Les down to a new line. Remember, I only need to type in the changed portion of the time above. So in this case, 05 space BK5 KLV stroke portable. And continue on with your log in the same fashion. Okay, I had a total of 39 QSOs on 40 metres SSB. My next QSO was on 20 metres. So if we look at line 2 of my log, I have 40 metres SSB. I need now to reflect in this log, in the panel, that I've changed bands. So after my last QSO on 40 metres with VK3UH, I press enter, go to a new line, and once again, I type in the band, 20 metres. If I formatted it correctly, you will see it will turn to red. SSB, enter. Now I simply need to follow the same process as above. My first contact on 20 metres SSB was at 0620 UTC. Space with Sugar 58 America Lima in Slovenia. Enter. My next contact was with Sugar 52 Kilo Mexico at 0622. But remember, no need to type in the 06. I simply need to type in 22. 22 space Sugar 52 Kilo Mexico. Enter. And I continue on entering my QSOs in the same fashion as above. Okay, I've reached a point in my log where again I change bands. So after working a number of stations on 20 metres SSB, I change back to 40 metres. So remember in your log you need to reflect that you've done that. 40 metres SSB. And you can see that I've made an error there. 40 metres was formatted correctly, but I've placed SBB. If it doesn't turn red, remember you've made an error. SSB entered correctly down to line 91. And again, start entering your QSOs. In my case, the first QSO was at 0711. Enter the time in full there with VK3 Alpha Bravo Mexico. Down to a new line. Enter. My next contact was with Peter. Remember, I've already typed in 07 for UTC. I simply need to type in the minutes. 17, 07, 17, space, BK3, Papa Fox, portable. Enter. And continue on. Okay, ZL4KD was my last contact for the day, my last entry for the log. So what do I need to do next? I need to export my QSOs. And this is all very simple, redundant, free and very fast. All I need to do is to export the QSOs from the left box, the text editor box, to now the QSO data grid, the second box appearing on my right.
And to do that, all I simply need to do is click on the update log grid button here. Or you can hit function key F5 to fill the log data grid with your QSO records. So if I click on update log grid, you'll see that all of my QSOs from the text editor box on the left now appear in the QSO data grid on the right. The text editor file can be saved and later opened again. If I click on Save Ada File, I can now export the QSO data into an Ada file, an amateur data interchange format file. The Ada file can be imported into your electronic logging software, but it also can be sent to the National Coordinator for WWFF in ADA format for upload to WWFF Log Search. Click on Save ADA file and remember you need to name it in the appropriate WWFF format. In my case it's VK5 Papa Alpha Sierra, the at sign, the reference VKFF919 and then the date in this format 2015-09-19. Save it in the appropriate area on your computer. You now have an ADA file. Now I've created my ADA file, I need to have it uploaded to Log Search. Within the WWFF program, all logs are forwarded to the national coordinator, the relevant national coordinator for upload to Log Search. In the SOTA program, you upload your own log, but it's important to remember that all logs for WWFF must be forwarded to the relevant national coordinator and they in turn upload the log to Log Search. But I just want to show you how easy that process is. I go to Log Search, which is at logsearch.wwff.co. I go to Upload Log, choose the file, and I then upload the ADA file. In this case here, you can see it's saved on my desktop, VK5PAS at VKFF919 2015-0919. When you forward a log to me via email, I will save it in this exact manner. Click on the relevant file. Personally, I enter the reference number, but if the file is formatted, there's no need for me to actually do that. Enter the station call, in this case, VK5 PAS, stroke portable. Again, no need to do that. I can click on auto detect and it will automatically detect in the file the call sign. But for safety reasons, I like to enter manually the call sign. I can also enter the operator call sign if that's a little bit different. Click on Upload. And there you have it. That's the screen that I then see. It will show that the log has been uploaded correctly. 106 QSOs processed of the 106 QSOs that were in the log. So I hope you found that a little bit of interest and of assistance to you. Fast Log Entry. It's a fantastic program, free, created by Delta Fox 3 Charlie Bravo, available on the internet. Have a go at it. I'm sure you'll find it very, very user friendly. And the more that you use it, the more you'll become familiar with the program. It's a great way to use a paper log in the field, but after coming home to rapidly enter your contacts and create an ADA file for upload to your electronic logging program and also for providing to the National Coordinator for upload to Log Search.